Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're going to be making jalapeno cheese bread in our cast iron Dutch oven, and we're going to be doing that coming right up. Okay, today we're going to be making jalapeno cheese bread in our cast iron Dutch oven. Now, I've never made this before, so you're going to get to see it for the first time as I get to see it. So if I make any mistakes, maybe you can learn from my mistakes. Hopefully I won't make any today. So let's get to it. Okay, we're going to start off our ingredients list with three and a half cups of bread flour. And we're going to put in one tablespoon of salt. We're going to put a quarter cup of jalapenos. You can use fresh jalapenos. I've got pickled jalapenos here, but I have a quarter cup. Depending on how spicy you like it, you can put more or less. We're also going to put in one and a half cups of sharp cheddar cheese. We're going to save a half a cup to put on the outside. And you can kind of guess at it, but I've got about a half a cup here. We're going to set that aside for later. Okay, we're going to set this aside just for a minute. And we're going to bring up two cups of warm water. We're going to add one tablespoon of sugar. And we're going to add two tablespoons of active dry yeast. Now it's going to try to clump up on you, so you want to stir it up. If it clumps up a little, that's okay. We just want to make sure it all gets wet. We're going to set this back aside while we're stirring up our other ingredients. We'll go ahead and stir this together. That'll give our yeast a little bit of time to bloom somewhat. Okay, so we have all of our dry ingredients stirred and we'll put that aside. Now it's time to go to the mixing bowl. We're going to go ahead and pour our water with our active yeast in there and then we'll go ahead and pour our dry ingredients in on top of that. This is really simple. Okay. Once we get it, everything incorporated, we're just going to pull it toward the center. And we're going to cover it for one hour. So we'll check back in one hour. Okay, while we're waiting on this to rise, we have about an hour. I figured I'd go ahead and show off the cast iron that I'm cooking this in. I have a number nine Lodge Dutch oven, one that I picked up at an estate sale and uh, kind of show it a little bit. One thing that you can tell a Lodge by, you usually have these dimples, these self-basting dimples. Now those are knuckle busters right there. And you can see it says, uh, it's a number nine and it says six quart. And it uh, actually says six and then six again quart, but it's a six quart. What I like about the, uh, these here is there's a little, there's a little curly part on this handle that makes it 
set up. Now this one doesn't have a four spout like Birmingham Stove and Range does. It's round. Of course we have a nice heat ring on the bottom. Plus we have our number nine. This is a little bit older pot. Now the outside is a little bit on the rough side, but the inside is milled really, really nice and smooth. And it is a nice piece. Now you can use a number eight for this, but uh, you notice we have the little, the little curly parts to the handles is on both handles. Now Wagner made one that had this little curly hook on one side, but not on the other. I picked this one up at an estate sale this one and I think a number eight together for 45 bucks. Now they looked horrible when I got them, but thankfully they came out and they turned out pretty good. So let's get back to our video. Okay, it's been one hour, so let's take a look at our dough. Okay, we'll take our cloth off. Now we're not going to need this. We're just going to kind of fold it over on itself a little bit maybe a little bit of stretching here but not any real kneading it's a little bit on the sticky side and we're going to go ahead and give it 30 more minutes. We'll go ahead and cover it. Okay, about 15 minutes in, we're going to take our Dutch oven and put it in the oven and preheat to 450 degrees. That way it'll be up to a complete temperature when our dough is ready. Okay, our oven has been preheated to 450 degrees along with our Dutch oven. So let's go ahead and get our bread ready to put in it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uncover it, and it has risen quite a bit, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it out right here, get us a little bit of bread flour so, so we don't have sticking. Kind of fold it a couple more times on itself. Now this is where a bench scraper comes in handy. Okay, and then we're going to take and we're going to kind of get a, little, get a little flour on your hands and we're just going to kind of spin it and cut into the bottom to kind of round the top out a little bit. we we'll take a little bit of parchment paper and a little bit of flour on our parchment paper and we're going to transport our dough to our parchment paper 
And remember we had our half a cup of cheese left over here. And we're just going to kind of pat this into the top. And whatever you have left around the edges, you can just kind of tuck in. That's going to be just, just fine. And we're going to score it. Just a little bit. And we're going to decorate it with some of our jalapeno slices. And like I said earlier, you can use less if you don't like it too spicy and you can use more if you like it more spicy. Let's see. Right here, and our Dutch oven has been preheated. Now we're just going to take our parchment paper and our dough, and we're going to drop it right inside our Dutch oven. I did forget to put a little bit of olive oil on top of my bread. So I'm just kind of go around the edges and I'm going to put a little olive oil around the edges. You should do this before you put your cheese on. But Maybe you can learn by my mistakes. Hopefully not putting the oil on before I put the cheese on is not going to be a problem. We'll find out. But we'll make sure I leave a note in the video to not forget that step. So let's see how it turns out. Okay, we put our bread in the oven at 450 degrees inside the preheated Dutch oven for 30 minutes. Then after 30 minutes, we took the lid off and let it set another 20 minutes in there to kind of brown the top. And we have just gotten it out. So let's take a look at it. Now it is making some sizzly noises. So we want to get this out of our Dutch oven because we don't want it to continue cooking. We want to get it out so that it will cool off. So let's slide this over. Make sure you don't get burned, but you can pick it up by the parchment paper. And it looks really, really good. Now we're going to let this cool for about 40 minutes before we cut it. Now you can cut it like it is, but you'll probably burn your hands. So I'm going to let it cool for about 30, 40 minutes, and then I'm going to cut it. We're going to take a look at it. I know one thing, it does look good. Okay, we've let it cool, and I think I need to let it cool a little longer, but I just can't wait. It's probably been about 25 minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and cut it because I love warm, cheesy bread. So let's pull the camera down and we'll do some cutting. Now I put it on this little tray to kind of cause it to cool a little bit faster, but we're going to go ahead and slide it off of there. And it's got some weight to it and some crust. And I went ahead and got my little plastic cutting board to go underneath it so I don't cut my, my little mat here, because this mat is really, really nice. So, oh man, it just feels really crusty. 
take a look there. Oh man, that looks really, really chewy. Cheesy and chewy. Now I'm thinking my knife is not quite going to be long enough to reach all the way, but we'll do what we can here. I think I probably could have let the top crust a little longer. I think I left it in there about 10 minutes with the lid off. Probably should have went ahead and done the full 20 minutes, but I got impatient. Impatience is one of my virtues. With smells, amazing. The aroma. Okay, I'm gonna take a piece. And it looks really good. That's some good cheesy bread. It's chewy. It's cheesy. It's crunchy. Spicy. Man, that is some good stuff. Now that is good. I hate to say I need it in front of you. But I just can't help myself. Mm-hmm. I've never made bread like this. But I can tell you, I'm going to be making a lot more of it. Really. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do not forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That way you'll be informed of new videos when they come out. And I promise I'll keep more of them coming. If you would like, you can follow Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I will leave a link to all of these sites below in the video description. So check them all out. And not very long from now, we're going to finally be opening CICookware.com. And I will be launching my new seasoning products. So, so just keep an eye out for that coming up very soon. And I just want to say again, thank you so much for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I would like to share something with you really quick. In John chapter 14, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I just want to say go out and share the word and be a blessing.